The purpose of this video is to save your eyeballs from damage during the upcoming solar eclipse. Welcome back to the Reflector channel. I, uh, I can't see my notes with these on. Much better. I recently bought a pair of solar eclipse glasses online and they were not up to the task. Many of them are legitimate, but there are some substandard ones being sold out there. In this video, I'm going to show you three ways to tell whether your solar eclipse glasses are any good or whether you should throw them in the trash. All of the following tests are qualitative, but the combination of all three should keep you reasonably safe. The sun dumps over 1,000 watts of energy for every square meter here on Earth. Needless to say, that's a lot of energy. Even a small fraction of that is enough to damage your eyes, a type of damage that's called solar retinopathy. It can be irreversible and it can cause permanent blindness. That is why you should never ever stare directly at the sun without proper safety equipment. With that said, the following are three ways to tell if your solar eclipse glasses are likely safe. In 1946, the International Organization of Standards, known as the ISO or ISO, was created to set up technical standards that would be used all across the member countries and reduce confusion around the globe. Now, because every acronym of that title would look different in the various languages, they chose to go by the name ISO, which is derived from the Greek word isos, which means equal. All these years, I've been spelling out the three letters when it's actually just pronounced ISO. Anyhow, each ISO standard has a number, and the one that we care about for solar film light transmittance is ISO 12312-2. I've put a link down in the description box, but here's the important table. As it turns out, there is some variability allowed. The ISO standard allows for a range of light transmittance from 0.0032% all the way down to 0.00. 0061%. Now, I'm not sure why there is a minimum, but if you happen to know, please leave a comment down below. Anyhow, the first test is to see if your solar eclipse glasses state that they are ISO 12312-2 compliant. Here's a legitimate pair, and if you look on the inside, you'll see that it says it is compliant, and hopefully they'll show the ISO logo too. Unfortunately, this is not a complete guarantee because the substandard glasses on the market could falsely claim that they are compliant. So we have to go on to the second test. True solar eclipse glasses are 1,000 times darker than actual sunglasses, which is why you should never use sunglasses to look at the sun or a solar eclipse. If you have any doubt about the quality of your solar eclipse glasses, uh, don't test them out by looking at the sun. Uh, instead, use them indoors to look at light bulbs or light fixtures. With legitimate solar eclipse glasses on, you might be able to see the intensely bright filament in the light bulb, but it should be pretty dim and you shouldn't really see anything else. For these examples, I'm going to use two pairs of solar eclipse glasses. The first one is a really good legitimate pair. These are made by a company called Rainbow Symphony. Now, Rainbow Symphony is not a sponsor of this channel. These are the glasses that we used during the last solar eclipse. Now, the bad ones, which I have covered up in tape, these are the ones that I got online recently. I'm not going to say the brand name, and that'll make sense a little bit later on. With that said, let's go ahead and turn the smartphone camera flash on and see what the difference is between these two. First, let's use the good ones, the Rainbow Symphony Solar Eclipse glasses. As you can see, it's, uh, it's quite dim, uh, but you can just sort of see the shape of the filament. All right, now we're gonna switch over to the substandard Solar Eclipse glasses and you can see it is much brighter. In fact, uh, let's go back and forth a couple of times. You can see it's a vast difference. Oh my gosh, if you're finding this video helpful, please push the like button. It means the world to little channels like this. Now for the artificial light test number two, shop lights. Uh, this is my workshop and overhead is an LED shop light. It's a tube of LEDs. And I have an LED spotlight right here. I'm going to turn this on. Shine it right there. It's going to be pretty bright. The first set of glasses we're going to show are the Rainbow Symphony, which are pretty good. I'll put these over the camera.
As you can see, you, you basically can't see anything except the very, very tiny LED uh, light filament. I'll pull those away. All right, now I'm going to put on the substandard solar eclipse glasses. And as you can see, it's it's hunting for focus. It's having a hard time focusing, but you can see um, it is really, really letting through a lot more light. Now, there's one thing I should mention. When I look through these visually, I can see a little bit more detail than you actually saw on the camera. In fact. When I look through these this way, I can actually see the studio lights. I can see the whole nylon rectangle with the central illumination. Now, the one caveat is, of course, I'm using a smartphone camera and it's set on the automatic settings and it's going to be hunting. But still, even with those similar settings, the legitimate ones from Rainbow Symphony barely let anything through. In fact, when I put those on and I look at these lights, I basically can't see anything. Uh, but when I put the bad ones on, I see what the camera saw maybe even a little bit more. And in my opinion, the bad ones are letting through too much light. The American Astronomical Society has a list of approved manufacturers, and it's a big list. There are a lot of different companies making approved solar eclipse glasses. So if your brand is not on this huge list, I would be concerned about their quality. I put a link directly to the list down in the description box. After this video, I really am going to throw the bad solar eclipse glasses in the trash. After all, I don't want anybody to accidentally find these and use these to look at the sun. But here's the catch. Do you remember the ISO 12312-2 standard had a range of variability when it came to light transmittance? Well, I don't have the scientific test equipment to verify whether these solar eclipse glasses are truly out of spec with the ISO 12312-2 standards. So I technically cannot claim that these are fraudulently stating that they are ISO compliant. What I can say for a fact is that the brand name on these solar eclipse glasses is not on the AAS approved list of manufacturers that I just spoke about, and I would not give these to any friends or family. So be safe. Don't make the mistake that I made. Only buy your solar eclipse glasses from brands that are listed on the AAS approved list of manufacturers. Good quality solar eclipse glasses should not make your eyes feel uncomfortable or hurt while you're using them. Even if you bought approved solar eclipse glasses, if your eyes feel uncomfortable or hurt while you're using them, please err on the side of safety and look away from the sun. I hope you have a safe and enjoyable eclipse experience. Clear skies, everybody. Do you remember the ISO 12312-2?